What's up? Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be showing you a full walkthrough of our 2024 Toyota Tacoma TRD Off-Road. This one is not the premium package, so it doesn't have the soft text seats. This one has the cloth seats, but with that being said, let's go ahead and go straight into it. So we are going to start at the driver's side door. Let's take a look at that. So on top, very similar to the 2022 and up Tundra, it has a flat top for your arm to rest up there. Down here we have the lock and the door handle, which is no longer chrome. It has this nice, um, almost matte satin finish. And then we have the armrest here the door handle, this is a rubber uh, um, kind of texture on top. This is all the controls, um, the lock for the windows, our, all of the um, window switches are there, door lock, and this is the um, side view mirror controls there. You can switch it from left to right and then control um, where it's facing. Down here, we have a little pocket that has molly style holes that you can strap stuff to the front of it. Right over here, our very nice touch is the TRD, you know, just TRD. Um, same finish as this up here on the handle. Yeah, that's a very nice touch in my opinion, just because it's never had anything uh, on the door to kind of make it look cool. Right underneath that, we have the door pocket, which is great for two bottles and then um, I guess a third bottle if you wanted to but this last one is a little bit bigger so if you guys want to have something a little bit bigger you can fit it there but the first two are great for bottles and then this one has the JBL package so it has upgraded speakers uh, I forgot down there it has Molly panels as well and then right down here has the door light but that's it for the side door moving over to this section as you can see we have a piece missing here it is a trim that we are having 3D scanned right now inside our shop. But basically, if you can imagine this finish here that will just cover up this, we will have a piece here that will allow you to run like a Switch Pros or sim something similar that will allow you to control um, lights, compressors, any accessories you want, and it'll be right up here. So be on the lookout for that if you guys are into that stuff. Right up above that, we have an air vent. This is for the um, side door. This is the JBL upgraded speaker bezel. And then we have this speaker area, which in my opinion kind of makes it a little bit difficult to clean um, if it gets pretty dusty up there. But there's that. And then let's finish the dash. So we have the removable speaker. You just click this, comes up, take it with you, and then, you know, it has a charging thing so you can charge while it's in the car and then that little circle thing is for the light sensor um, that tells your truck when to turn on the automatic headlights and then the speakers over there are very similar uh, and the uh, vent as well now coming back over here we have a couple switches here this whole section is pretty cool this is new um, obviously this whole truck's new, but we have never had auxiliary switches from factory from Toyota before. So now we have three down here and then a couple more blank spots if we wanted to add more auxiliary switches. The only downside with these, they're just on and off. There's no strobe, there's no other features. You can't control it from your phone, which is why we're coming up with a little panel. Uh, it's gonna be a factory replacement so that way you can strobe and control it from your phone via Bluetooth and whatnot. But here we have auto high beam, traction control, AC 120 volt. This is to adjust your headlights up and down. Um, that's gonna come in very handy when we lift our vehicle, that way we can adjust our headlight down so we don't blind people. Um, this is for the light for your cluster. Um, and then this orientation is gonna be different for pretty much all the models. From what I've seen at least, some of these are in different lo locations. And then right underneath that, we have the uh, cab light button. You can have it off or you can have it on auto, which is in the middle, and then you can turn it on. We are going to be wiring up some rock lights that are gonna be underneath the truck um, to this button. So that way, when we walk up to our door and when our door opens, we're gonna have a nice 
light that's going to um, light up the area around the truck and I'll show you guys what I mean by that if you guys haven't seen that before it's very cool it's great for like pretty much anything um, rock crawling or just daily use is very handy and then we have another blank switch over here for this style these are the square styles up here and this is more of the rectangular style and then underneath that we have our hood latch which just allows us to open up the hood now going over to the steering wheel here very similar to the third gen tundra probably almost the exact same to be honest the emblem is no longer chrome which is nice satin finish over here we have the back button call button back and forth up and down and then okay you push down to select volume is still back and forth instead of up and down um, i know some people are complaining about that um, and then there is the kind of like the toyota assist button over here we have all the cruise control stuff um, we have the uh, cruise control the lane assist uh, adaptive cruise control resume up and down cancel the mode back and forth you guys will figure all that stuff later but something on the dash that i will show you guys right now which is pretty cool so normally you don't have a digital dash like this but let me shut it off real quick show you guys what that looks like we might have to lock it but essentially it's just black right so and then we start up the vehicle full digital screen and what that means is that you can change these to however you'd like so currently i have it set up to um, iforce boost uh, for the turbo that way i can see the turbo boost how many pounds of boost i'm i'm running and then in the middle i have the adaptive control and then over here i have my mpgs as you can see i'm getting about 19 and that's you know a total between city driving and highway driving i get on it a little bit just because it's new to me and i love the power and then you can see the parking brake um, down there on the bottom but the cool thing now let me show you over here you can cycle between different um, screens so i'm going to click this but i'm going to focus on here so you can see let me zoom in okay i'm going to go to the right all right so now we have different uh, menus so obviously we still have the rpm over here and then the miles per hour over here but you see you have the battery now and the oil temperature and then over here we have the coolant temperature and then uh, I think that's the gear temperature. And then there's another menu. So we're going to click one more time. This is my third menu. I have, uh, this is, I believe the, it's, it tracks where you are slipping. So I forget what it's called, but it's on the left side. And then over here I have my angle finder. So basically if I, get off camera I can see what angle I'm at also really good for when you are trying to level yourself out when you are camping with a rooftop tent you can use this as well so let me show you guys how to change that so you just click here press and hold and then this will come up the middle said said blank so I can, you could cycle through you can change the pitch and roll to you know something else to like tire pressure um trail mode engine trans or just leave a blank so you guys kind of get the idea and then going back to the middle you can change this to uh, messages settings driving support like adaptive cruise control or leave the blank and then on the left side you can you know tune it to however you like so normally i'll probably put this on either traction monitor or uh, tire pressure and then you just hit okay and then you're good to go or actually hit back there we go so three menus that you can customize that is very cool and you can't do that obviously with a normal cluster so that feature right there is very nice one for daily driving one for off-roading 
yada yada. But another cool thing I'm gonna show you is this right here. So this dial, which we'll get to this whole section here, but since we are on the cluster, I'm gonna show you that. So this, when you turn it, it'll change the mode. So I'm gonna turn it red for sport mode. And then you can go, you know, normal, and then eco, you get this teal color, and then go back to normal. So. There's that, and then it changes the background. So if you go to sport mode, it doesn't only just change this red for a little bit, when it actually goes back to the cluster, kind of the dark lines, very thin lines in the back there are red as well. So it lets you know what mode you're in even when you don't select this. Very cool, I like that a lot. Now, let's go over here. In the third gen, the push button start was right next to the climate control. People would get that mixed up, you know, um, and the, actually the climate was actually next to the locker um, as well. So um, very poor placement, but this is like a perfect spot. You can see it from the driver's seat and it's up high and it's red. So that's very cool. Right underneath that we have like the trailer assists uh, and, and braking and stuff like that. I'm not a big trailer guy but uh, I know people a lot of people use this so that'd be nice I do have a small like adventure trailer but it doesn't have uh, electronic brakes or anything like that so that's cool um, well you know we forgot to talk about these but these are pretty standard just the wiper blades um, I mean the wipers and then the auto um, high beam and all the other stuff is over here so nothing nothing fancy about that now let's talk about this giant 14 inch screen. This I thought would look ridiculous because when I saw 14 inches in a Tacoma, I was like, that's way too big, but actually fits the truck pretty well. And I love it. I love the size of this thing. And I have CarPlay pulled up. So let me take you back to the native, like Toyota. So this is the native Toyota, you know, screen, I guess. You got CarPlay on top, which that wouldn't be there if you don't have your phone connected. You have navigation, you have music, you have calls, uh, vehicle information, and then settings. This is where you can connect your information. So that way when you get in, it, it knows you, who you are. It connects your information um, and all that stuff. It has Wi-Fi as well. You can tweak your sound. And by the way, this JBL speaker with the sub in the back sounds amazing. So I have my bass uh, cranked all the way up, treble up a little bit, and then mid just sit right there. This sounds so, so good. So if you are coming from a third gen, you're gonna love the speakers on this thing. And not only um, the JBL, but the other one sounds pretty good too. Uh, I listened at the dealership, but the JBL with the sub definitely is, is the, uh, the clear winner. Right underneath the huge display, we have the air vents. Volume button in the middle. Everything is very, very symmetric. As you can tell, you got two vents. The speaker knob to kind of divide that. And then the climate um, controls are here. This is the a very big and rubbery knob, so you can really grab onto it. I like this better than the Tundra, just because the Tundra has more of like a up and down kind of thing like this, which I didn't like. I love that how fast I can change the um, the uh, temperature on this. So um, volume, very rubbery as well. It looks cool too. Um, the heated steering wheel, this one has that option. I'm not, I'm not sure if all of them do, but heated steering wheel, great for Colorado when it gets cold. Right next to the uh, climate button, um, knob we have the heated seats even though we have cloth seats it's nice to uh, to be toasty on those uh, winter days right next to that we have the screen for this I usually run mine on auto but you can change it you know so it'll show how high you are and then over here we have the passenger side seat heater warmer the um, the other climate control button right underneath that these are very cool very cool buttons so they have like this little these little textures 
on them and they're like a silver color so they look very fancy so we have the front windshield rear windshield with the side view mirrors to melt the snow we have the mode um, recirculating air and then the ac button there but like i said i usually run mine on auto so it, it does everything for me so i don't have to worry about it but let's crank up the brightness down here a little bit so you can see the um, design and everything so right here perfect for your phone got my kiddos on my uh, screen so right here it'll start automatically charging whenever oh it's already charging okay cool um, so there's no button now you just put it on there and it starts charging as far as I know there's no button and it even tells you right here don't put random stuff right there probably because it's always on but that's where your phone goes and I was looking at this I was like where can you put a phone mount you know here would block the push to start you can't put it over there because it's really far um, and you can't really put it in the vent because it will cover the vent and honestly I think Toyota nailed it with this one putting it in this you can still see your phone but it's like kind of out of the way so you, you're not really wanting to grab it as much which is nice next to that we have this like textured area where you can put other things maybe um, but there's that we have two USB-C um, ports here they I think they're fast charging as well 45 watts each and then we have this cigarette lighter right here Let me zoom in from that so there are those and there's the line on that back piece there's a little pocket right here if you wanted to put it something there and then let's talk about the shift knob so we have the TRD off-road package so it comes with the TRD I don't I'm sure the other ones, the non-tiered, are just a standard shift knob. Nothing really fancy about it, but this it feels really good. I really like the square look. The button clicks really good. But down here, standard stuff. Parking brake, um, which didn't happen on the third gen, so that's new. Hold brake, that's really nice. I use that a lot when I'm like at a drive-through and there's a there's a wait. So that's that's nice to have. And then down here we have. Let me, lower the brightness the locker that's great uh, so if you guys are looking for a 24 Tacoma I would highly get or recommend getting a TRD off-road at least just to have this rear locker button I don't know if it's necessary to get the pro um, unless you really like the seats and the pro high clearance bumpers and just the way it looks but we got the off-road because we wanted to modify the uh, the truck as much as possible so we're gonna have aftermarket suspension we're gonna have a roof rack bed rack lights bumpers everything so we got the off-road that's what I would recommend everybody who gets a Tacoma so um, extra switches down here that way you can um, add more switches right over here we have the four-wheel drive controller you have this little button here and then you can pull it over that's for high and then you gotta pop this in neutral and then you can go in for low. The one thing I didn't like about this is that it's it, it protrudes out a little bit from, from this seat. So those of you guys who have uh, thicker thighs might rub on this little section here just a little bit, but it's not too bad. Push button, pull it over, and then this turning this whole knob will change the um, mode to sport, standard, or eco. And then you have the tow mode here. Um, downhill assist, crawl mode, um, I forget what this button does, um, MTS, and then there's the drive mode. But there's all that. The cup holder still doesn't fit a Nalgene bottle or anything big, so we might have something coming for that for you guys as well. So that way you can fit a Red Bull all the way up to a Nalgene bottle. Now, let's talk about the center console. There's really nothing special about this. Toyota does offer a security box. I forget if it goes down here or if it goes up here, but you, you can have a lock to lock that. But square, you still have, let me turn up the brightness. You still have the two cup holders back here in between the driver and passenger seat. You still have that nice pattern down there as well. On the passenger door, you can see everything is pretty much the same, flat on top, Molly 
panel down there, Molly panel over there, three cup holders, the TRD right there. Everything is pretty much the same over there. There is a little pocket right up here to kind of keep, you know, some some stuff up here. Might slide around a little bit, so. Um, but you can put something up here. There is a little USB-C port up here if your passenger wanted to plug it in and put their phone up here or something. And then there's this uh, handle right up here, which is kind of kind of funky. It's not a pass-through handle like how it normally should be. You know, something like this would have been great too, but I think they thought it took up too much space. But there's a little area for your finger to nest in and then you grab this. So it's not like the best grip, but it'll work to help passengers get in the vehicle. The vents are very similar to the driver's side. This here, this is kind of annoying. I don't know if you, yeah, look at that. This is kind of a flaw in my opinion. So you can obviously lock it, but I think this hole where the hinge latches into, and this is the hinge right there. I think that hole might have been a little bit too far towards the inside. I think if it was up more, it would have latched a little bit further. But this is what the inside of this looks like. There's access to your cabin air filter back there. Pretty standard in there, but like I said, if you off-road and you're going fast, that's gonna be annoying. So we, we'll probably come up with a fix for that. That's, that's pretty easy. But, and then Toyota gave us one of these. I don't know if it come with, comes with every single Toyota Tacoma, but you know, it's right there, it's Velcro. You can easily, quickly pull it off, use it, put it back. And then on this side, you have the passenger handle which is rubber on top as well. That same texture. It's pretty nice. And then there's this little hook. You can probably hook like a little trash bag. That way you can put stuff here or hook anything you want right there. And then the molly continues on this side as well. Now let's look on top. You still get this handle. That's a microphone. I wonder what that is. I'm not sure what that guy is, but this uh, visor, I'll tell you about this visor. You can't see, there you go, now you can see it. You see how it is rubbing across there and all along right here? Yeah, that's, uh, that's gonna wear away this fabric after a lot of use. It's just literally just dragging. So I feel like that was a flaw too, but what I would do, I just pull it down a little bit and then swing it over. But yeah, it's a little, little funky. This is nice. This is LED now, um, but this still slides out. Yep, and that still slides out as well. Driver's side is the same way. The driver's side just has this little clip, but it does drag as well, right on top, right there. So, there's that. Um, I believe there is a digital rear view mirror option, so that way in your third brake, like it has a little camera so you can see inside your bed and then back um, as a digital view instead of a mirror. I am assuming, because we haven't seen one, but the third gen Tundra has it, and on the third brake light back there, there's actually a little location for it. So I assume that it's gonna have one in the higher trims or as an option. But right up here, you get a glass holder or glasses holder. Before, if you have a TRD off-road, all your um, four-wheel drive, um, your MTS and terrain select, everything is up here. So you, don't, you didn't get one of these in the third gen Tacoma. But up here we have extremely dim LEDs, which are no good. So. Miso Customs, he's working on something um, for that already, so we'll show you guys that when it comes out. Up here we have all, you know, the uh, passenger airbags, all that stuff, SOS. We have 
a moon roof so we have uh, the up and down and then open and close and then this is for the back window which is a small window it's not a full size window so I'll show you guys how that works here open there you go it would have been cooler if the whole glass went down like the third gen tundra but it's okay and then lastly we have our door off on and not and this is our moon roof pretty standard nothing super fancy it's not a panoramic or anything like that it's just a standard moon roof there is one thing i forgot to show you guys while i was over here so on the driver's side door there is this little panel and it has morse code on it which i have not deciphered yet but in here looks like it's a little storage for something so on the back of this there's a qr code that you can scan it takes you to a web website link on toyota's website it's basically a secret taco club so pretty cool there's a lot of little easter eggs around the truck that you guys will find like that is that is pretty cool so the other thing i forgot to show you guys are the seats as well so the seats are now eight um eight whatever uh eight motion or whatever or eight positions but you can control it now um the 2023 did release with this so it's nice that this one continue to have it and then the seats on this guy this one is a two-tone gray well dark gray with gray and then goes back to dark gray as these lines across it i wish i could have found one with soft text and all this other stuff and a log bit that i wanted but we kind of got what you know what came first and this eight position um electronic seats continue on through the passenger side as well which did not have in the third gen so nice now onto the rear of this double cab we have the same styling single window handle no rubber here it's just it's just more of a pocket the trd continues which is really nice you have the flat top as well this area is flat as well the molly panel continues down here down there and then three pockets eh, kind of more like two i'm not sure if you can use that one but um same styling on the speaker cover and then these these seats are a little bit different they're more like you know they're a lot cooler than the third gen where the this is like kind of nested into the seat shoulder or the seat's shoulder so it's a very cool design that they came out with that we don't have the all season floor mats as you guys can tell here but we will figure out something eventually because i do want to cover that middle section which is just straight carpet but according to Toyota, they got an extra four inches of extra leg room back here and reduced one inch in the front. And how they did that is they made the rear seats more um, straight instead of how it was before. So it's not a ton, but it is a little bit more room than before, if you guys are worried about that, because that's kind of like my my least favorite thing about the Tacoma is the back seats. So, but the good thing is that I do have younger kids. So, you know, this is me in here and I'm 5'10". The only thing I don't like is that the, my feet are kind of just jammed in there. There's no, there's no up and down movement at all. So that's not super nice, but if you have big feet and you're sitting in the back, you probably shouldn't be sitting in the back. Um, but once you're under here, it's it's tight. But right over here, we got those two cup holders between the seats. We have an AC 120 volt down here, which is nice. That's just like you can plug in your laptop or anything like that, which is cool. Two USB C's, um, some vents down here, and then the driver rear door is the same as the passenger rear door. The seats are the same two-tone gray and dark gray. And then right up here, we have a dome LED light, which has two LEDs in there. And this one is a lot better than the front, but still not great. So we're gonna be replacing that with a Miso Customs dome light, which has the white and red option, 
I really like the red option. That way, when you go camping, you just turn on red. And when you go in the truck, you don't bring all the bugs with you. So the front, hopefully, will have red as well. But I know this one has red because I just tested it and I uh, confirmed everything was working properly. Back here, we got a couple hooks for stuff, maybe hangers. I've never used those before. So, so these seats are a little bit different than the third gen because in the third gen, this piece, the seat, folds forward and then the back drops into that area. But now this folds up kind of like the third gen Tundra. However, it doesn't really stay up that well unless you clip this in, which is not a big deal, but you just clip this right there. I wish they made it like the third gen Tundra so that way there's a hinge that it just stays and you wouldn't need this because this doesn't really look super great. Um, when you especially when you had to tuck it right there but under here very cool texture down here as well a lot of storage down here this side not as so much as the other side but let me see if i can lift this side as well there we go so tons of storage down here and i, I like that they went with this way instead because in the third gen you don't have any storage underneath which kind of is, was a waste but Here's that, and then that side doesn't stay up as well as as back here because it has a lot more weight. So that'll drop, but put that down. Now let's take a look back here. There's a tab right up here, just like the third gen. Pull that up, drop it down. You can remove the headrest so that way it goes all the way down. But back here on the passenger side, you have all your um, tire, uh, spare tire stuff. You have your bottle jack, your spare tire tools, and a little bit of storage back here if you wanted to throw, I don't know, straps, bungees, whatever back there. And then on this side, the strap is more in the middle. So we have the JBL package, so we don't have that little room continuing all the way over here but instead we have the jbl subwoofer which in my opinion is worth it to me because if you're like me you like listening to music every once in a while or every day on your commute having this is very nice and it hits pretty good i'm, I'm surprised so i did forget to talk about the rear handles that are on the passenger and driver's side for rear passengers to grab onto and hop into the vehicle so this is on both sides and i did forget to talk about this as well this is probably one of my favorite touches um, that toyota did so the tacoma is a gloss black so very cool okay so i think that is going to cover everything in our trim level and if you wanted to see anything you know in a dedicated video just let me know and we might make that video but if you are interested in making or modifying your Toyota Tacoma in the future be sure to follow along because we are going to modify this bone stock Tacoma into a beast so just be on the lookout for that and we're gonna get started pretty soon with some tires and then some wheels and new tires and a roof rack and a bed rack and a bunch of stuff and we already have this whole build pretty much planned out so make sure you guys follow along because you guys are going to love it but that's going to be it be sure to subscribe and we'll see you guys in a later video peace